So today's video is gonna be a little different. I've been obsessing over camera rig builds. We just picked up a Sony FX6 and it's a camera that we're using right now to film this A-roll. And I've literally watched every YouTube video about rigging up that camera, which led me to think about something. We just finished a short film on the Panasonic S5 II, which by the way, it's going to be released this week. And trust me, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you're definitely gonna wanna hit that notification bell. And we fully rigged that camera up and it was just a fun shoot that I thought to myself, why don't I make a video? I've never done a video where I build a camera rig setup from start to finish. Aside from the cage, all these parts are pretty much universal. So if you don't own an S5 II, let's say you own an FX3, an A7S, a Canon, Fuji, a RED camera, it doesn't really matter. You can use this video as inspiration. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now the cage that we're gonna be talking about is the one from Condor Blue. Now Panasonic actually worked alongside with Condor Blue to develop this cage. And you'll notice that there's a lot of things specifically designed for filmmakers, they had them in mind. For example, the sensor plane marker that you'll notice here on the right hand side. And then you'll notice around the whole entire cage, there's a ton, and I mean a ton of mounting points on top, left side, and even towards the bottom. Now on the bottom, there's also an attachment that you can install that goes from Arca Swiss that was designed specifically for DJI Ronin gimbals. Now one of the most crucial design features about this cage is this mid rail. Now I've actually used cameras that are actually this tall, and if you don't have this mid rail in place, if you're using a follow focus or you start to rig it up, it's starts to flex. So having this mid rail here is very important. Now early on we knew that we were going to transition from a shoulder rig setup to a tripod to a jib to even using a gimbal. So we needed something where we could quickly go from one setup to another. Now we went with the Condor Blue RE bridge plate which was specifically designed, this one here, for the Red Komodo. But it works great for the S5 II. Now you'll notice that we have 15 millimeter rods already mounted onto the bottom base of the bridge plate. But something else to note is that you can actually use a dovetail, and this is what makes it easy to transition from one system to another. So if you take your dovetail and you put this on a tripod, you put this on a jib, you put this pretty much on your shoulder rig setup or anything, you can quickly slide this to the dovetail and then lock this into place. So take your whole entire setup. Now on the bottom of the camera, you'll notice that we have an Arca Swiss. So the actual bridge plate itself uses an Arca Swiss type of mounting system, and this actually mounts together with the bottom base, making it all come together. Now for the short film, DZO was kind enough to send over their Kata zoom lenses. These are their full frame VistaVision lenses, which are beautiful. They sent over the brand new 18 to 35, the 35 to 80, which is the one I'm holding here, and also the 70 to 135. Now these lenses are PL, so we would need an adapter for that. So I actually reached out to this company called Mofage or Mofage, I don't know. <laughs> but they're actually having a Kickstarter and I saw this on my Instagram and I thought it was a really cool mount because you're able to change out the back. So it has a couple of different screws and you can go from E mount to RF mount to L mount or different types of mounts in a matter of seconds and it actually works really good. This particular one though, the Mofage, what makes it interesting is that it has built-in ND filters. And knowing that we were gonna be shooting indoors and outdoors, this was gonna be clutch. Not to mention you can also add like Black Pro Mist and other things. So there's a lot to talk about this lens. And if you guys wanna see a dedicated video on it, leave me a comment down below. Now, because these are PL zoom lenses and the housing is made out of aluminum, not to mention all of the optics inside make this lens pretty heavy. So what that means is it's going to add a bit of stress onto the mount, so we wanna eliminate that. So we wanna add a lens support. And I like this one here because if you notice, on the 15 millimeter rod support, it's actually cut from underneath. And this makes it very useful because whenever you have something already installed, let's say a matte box or just accessories on the rail, what I can do is I can just literally go right here from the middle and then I could just drop it down anywhere and then just lock it into place really easily and then on the other side over here I can just raise this up to my desired height and then lock that into place. So this little small but efficient item makes it so worth it especially if you're using these type of lenses. Now standout feature on Condor Blue cages is that most of them have a quarter 20 or 38 mount support located towards the front. In this case, the S5 II has one, and we were able to mount an M12 anti-twist rod mount, which is actually one of my favorite little trinkets, and I'll show you guys why. Because all you need to do is buy a six inch, 15 millimeter rod with threads, and then check this out. 
And once we thread this, you'll notice that it starts to look like one piece. It looks invisible, and I really, really like that. Like, check that out. It looks like the actual rod is part of the cage, and I think that looks awesome. And of course, to in order to pull focus, we need our follow focus system, and the one we're using is the one from Small Rig. Now we're only pulling focus, we're not gonna be putting another motor for our zoom part because we're not really zooming throughout the, uh, the film. Uh, and DZO has this really cool knob where we can actually just quickly change the focal range. And also we're not gonna be changing T-stop. So just one motor for the follow focus and this rod support system works phenomenal. So now that we have our follow focus system in place and I'm gonna be installing also a monitor very soon, we're gonna need some power. So I have the Condor Blue Cine V-mount plate and this has a lot of various DC outputs including a D-tap here on the side. So let's go ahead and slide this into our rail system. Okay, lock this into place. Now we're also gonna need a wireless transmitter for our video feed. And the one that I've been using now for years is from Teradek. This is actually the Bolt 4K. I love this one because this actually attaches directly to the battery plate. So you're not actually mounting it to the camera. You don't need any additional accessories. It sits nicely sandwiched between the battery plate and also the battery. So the battery that I'm gonna be using is this Anton Bauer Titan SL150. Now this battery here, when we shot our short film, actually lasted about five hours. That was powering the transmitter, that was powering the camera via USB-C, and also the follow focus system and the monitor. Now a lot of the accessories that we're gonna be using require DTAP power. So what I like to do is run a DTAP hub. Now this DTAP hub also has a voltmeter and you have different types of quarter 20 uh, locations. And you can see here because I've already pre-installed some Mondo tie to go with it. And then towards the back, there's also a quarter 20 where I mounted a NATO rail clamp. And this NATO rail clamp is gonna be useful because now what I can do is I can actually just slide this here and then lock this into place, and then here it is. Now all of my DTAP distribution center is located on the right-hand side. Now this Mondo tie is gonna be useful because what I can do here is just Mondo tie here, this cable, Mondo tie here, and then connect this towards the side of my camera. So now this is getting power, and now again, this is my distribution center, so everything that requires DTAP will be powered through here, and then anything that's DC will be powered over here on the battery plate. Now towards the side of the cage, we have an Airy Rosette, and we're gonna install the new trigger wing side handle. Now this one has various mounting options. You can mount it on the left side or the right side, and then there's also a mounting option on the top. And then you also have a cold shoe where you can put like, you know, like a Rode Wireless Go uh, transmitter or receiver actually. Uh, so there's a lot of cool little things you can do with it. And it also has a start stop record button that's located on the front so you don't have to actually use the one on the camera, which I really like. Now here's the problem. If I was not to install this directly onto the cage, I have to twist this and then what happens is if I wanna make any adjustments, I have to loosen it up, make the adjustment, retine it, it becomes a hassle. So what I'm gonna do is install this rosette quick release, I'm gonna sandwich this guy in between, and what this is going to allow me to do is actually push this button, and now I can adjust it any direction I want without having to loosen the side handle. Now, for the top handle, uh, the one that I like to use, and I'm telling you right now, it's probably the most comfortable top handle I have ever used, hands down, is this new one from Condor Blue, it's the Talon top handle, and I'm telling you, it is super comfortable because the way it works is you actually put your index finger here and then it holds it into place. Now they make different sizes. I like this smaller version better um, and it has a natal rail on the bottom so you could just quickly slide this on top of the cage or really anywhere where it accepts a natal rail and then you just lock this in here and there it is. Super, super comfortable. Again, they make a longer version. I prefer the smaller one. I think it even looks dope too and they even have a start stop version. I don't need that because I already have my start stop button here on the side grip handle, so I wanted more of something plain, but this is super, super comfortable. Now we're gonna mount a monitor on top and because this also has a NATO rail, again, they think about these little things and they're very intelligent about it. We're gonna use a NATO to NATO monitor mount. Now this monitor mount just slides into place here and then we lock this in here 
and now we have another NATO rail support. So right here I have this OC4K monitor and we're gonna install this NATO rail. But it's not just your typical NATO rail. The way this works is actually really brilliant. So here Condor Blue designed different attachments depending on the type of monitor that you're using. So if you're using an Atomos, small HD, OC, or it doesn't really matter because they have a universal one too. So check this out. On the bottom here, we have this quarter 20 mount and then we have these airy pins here. So again, I can use this one here and it'll work. I can put this little block that goes onto the monitor. Now you'll notice on the NATO rail itself, it's actually notched out. So it's blocked out so that you can actually put this on top of here. And what happens is look, it's anti-twist. So now when we put our bolt in the middle and then we lock this into place, the NATO rail is not going to move. And this is really important because a lot of times NATO rails get really squirrely and they start to move lock this into place. So now let me move this aside, bring my camera rig over here. And because this has a NATO rail and this is NATO rail to NATO rail, I can just quickly just push the little locking pin and then it locks into place. Lock this so that it doesn't move. And now look at this. No matter where I swivel the monitor up, down, left, right, it will stay in place. This setup here is so awesome because again, you can attach this to basically any type of monitor setup. And not to mention, you can utilize these NATO rails for other things. For example, on set, we use them as monitor handles for our Teradek and it just worked flawlessly. In fact, I think we even have a clip on that that I can show you guys. I'm not a fan of the small HD built-in handles, especially when you're transporting them. Like I always have to take them out. There's like two bolts. This right here is also on a NATO rail. So I could take this off and for transportation purposes, look at that, bam, woo. Now, because we also need a time code, we added the Deity TC1. And one thing I love about the Condor Blue Cage is that on the cold shoe side, it has that locking pin. So whatever you attach there is not going to come off. So this is it. This is the full camera build for the S5 II that we used in our short film. Now, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. But more importantly, make sure you guys turn on notifications because next week we're going to be launching that short film where we use this entire setup. Now also, if you guys wanna see more BTS, make sure to subscribe to Condor Blue's YouTube channel and also Photo Joseph's YouTube channel, which he was also part of the production. You're gonna have a lot of BTS. You don't wanna miss out. I'll leave links down below in the description. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.